Hey guys, it's Lewis EF1 here, and today you might be asking, who is Robert Kubica by the title, or who is Steve Park, as the title is called, F1's own Steve Park, or something like that, it'll be something like that, I haven't titled the video yet, clearly, but I'll talk about Steve in a later video, but first, I'd like to address the lack of uploads lately, school's had me overwhelmed and busy for the past few weeks but I'm back and hopefully here to stay so Robert Kubica many of you guys might know him as an Alfa Romeo a reserve driver or a man who wasn't who wasn't that good in F1 after his stint with Williams in 2019 but I will tell you Robert was much much more than that and some of the older F1 fans will tell you that. Here is the story of the one and only Polish F1 driver in the history of Formula 1, Robert Kubica. Kubica started karting at the age of 4 with a 4-stroke engine that virtually had no horsepower. It was estimated around 4, but it could still go up to 40 km per hour. This was an off-road kart that he saw beside the road and... Basically, he convinced his dad to buy it for him. He loved this car, and he would race it around plastic bottles for hours on end. He eventually convinced his dad to get him a real car at, is a, at the age of six, but he couldn't compete in the Polish Karting Championship as he had to be 10 or older to compete, uh, to compete in it. Once he became 10, he got his racing license later, and he started driving in the Polish Karting Championship. His car, his family wasn't wealthy, and this will play a big car, part in his karting career. <laughs> well, in the while in the Polish Karting Championship, Kubica won six titles in three years, and he left to Italy after for more competitive racing, as Poland doesn't have a big racing infrastructure. Uh, in, two, in 1998, Kubica would become the first foreign driver to win the Italian, the International Italian Junior Karting Championship, and he would also get second in the European Junior Karting Championship and win the Junior Monaco Kart Cup. He seeked to defend his karting championship in Italy and also drove in the International German Karting Championship, where he would win both and progressed to the European and World Karting Championships in his final year of karting. He famously drove for CRG alongside Lewis Hamilton and 2016 World Champion Nico Rosberg. He would finish in fourth with bo in both championships and would move on that uh, later to become a Formula Renault 2000 test driver and a part of the Renault Driver Development Academy. One thing I would like to mention real quick, as Kubica's family didn't have most money, he had a plain white helmet compared to all the other drivers in karting who probably had very lively designs, you know, helmet designs that you get used to nowadays, like Rosberg's design for instance. And his father always said he'd rather get two sets of tires than buy paint to paint Kubica's helmet. Kubica would go on to drive in the Formula Renault 2000 Euro Cup in Italian Series for two years, with his best, cha his best championship run finishing second in Italian in the Italian version, with four wins in ten races, and he would also have a one-off in the former Renault 2000 Brazil series in 2002 at Interlagos where he famously took a dominant victory. He left Formula Renault 2000 series after 2002 to go to Formula Euro series for 2003. Before the season started though, Kubica got in a car accident which left him with a broken arm back in Poland. He had 18 titanium bolts holding his arm in because apparently no doctors wanted to per perform surgery on that arm 
probably likely because his parents didn't have much money or anything. As a result of this injury, he missed the first three rounds but returned at the Norris ring with the screws still in his arm holding it together and a plastic brace. Kubica would go on to win this race at the Norris ring at his first outing in the Formula 3 Euro Series. He would finish 12th that season and stayed for one more year where where he drove for the Mercedes factory team. He would finish 6th in the championship while breaking the Macau Grand Prix lap record but finishing 2nd in that race. It was said by the team boss, John Booth, that Hamilton would be 2.5 seconds quicker than anyone else in the field. As mentioned earlier, Kubica would take pole but finish 2nd to Alexandra Permat after Rosberg took out Hamilton. In 2005, Kubica would race in the Formula Renault 3.5 or the form or the Formula the Renault World Series in 2005, where he would win three races, and he 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 won four races actually. I think I, think I got that wrong, but he won four races with Ellipson Escuadi. And would win the championship with them, which earned him a test with the Renault Formula 1 team. Kubica says to this day that the R25 is the best car he has ever driven. In 2006, Kubica would sign with BMW Sauber as a test driver. Later that season, Jacques Villeneuve would injure himself at the German Grand Prix and would be unfit to race in Hungary against what he thought against what he believed. Kubica would take his debut, replace Vilnov in Hungary, and qualify ninth ahead of his more experienced teammate, uh, Nick Heidfeld. He would finish seventh, but was disqualified for having an underweight car, while Heidfeld would go on to finish third. Vilnov left the BMW South er, shortly after this, and Kubica would get the seat alongside Heidfeld for the rest of the 2006 season. Kubica was officially the first Polish Formula 1 driver in Formula 1 history. Now, with Kubica having a half season and not even his first full season, you would think that he'd take it chill back a little bit. He wouldn't have any standing out finishes. But in his third race in Formula 1, he would podium behind Raikkonen and Schumacher, who was the winner... And he, in that same race, he would become the first Formula 1 Polish driver to lead a Grand Prix and finish on the podium. BMW Sauber would retain that same lineup for 2007. Eric Kubica failed to podium that season with the highest finish of 4th at Spain, Britain, and France. He would finish 22 points behind his teammate, Heidfeld, in 6th with the old point system, which basically would award the first driver with 10 points, second with 8, third with 6, fourth with 5th, 5th with 4th, 6th with 3, 7th with 2, and 8th with 1. He would have a terrible crash at Canada, where he would hit the back of Riano Trulli's Toyota and hit a hump in the grass which would lift his car into the air before smashing into the concrete retaining wall at 75 G's. As you'll be able to see on screen right now, Kibitz's feet are hanging out of the cockpit. Upon arrival at the hospital, in an accident that many people thought might have killed him, he was in stable condition but would miss the United States Grand Prix with a light concussion and sprained ankle as a precaution, giving Sebastian Vettel his his debut race. For the 2008 season, Sauber would once again stick with Heidfeld and Kubica. Kubica would earn the first and earn the team's first pole position at Bahrain, which demonstrated the pace of the BMW Saubers and that they could have the ability to win the championship. That season, he would podium seven times and finish fourth in the championship on a tiebreaker against Raikkonen. Kimi had three wins to Kubica's one. I did say that indeed. 
Kubica would have a perfect redemption arc in Canada as he would win the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix in a BMW Sauber 1-2. He would take the lead of the Drivers World Championship that race and become the first Polish driver to lead the Drivers World Championship and to win in Formula 1. Glock, Glock is not succumbing to the pressure at the moment and maintains fourth position. Kubica then with uh, really not too much to do. This is where he had his enormous accident last year that many people thought might have killed him. He went on his head at 185 miles an hour. It put him out for a race or two, but he bounced back. This season, he has been flawless. He's been on the podium on three occasions already. He's yet to unlock the first victory, but it's coming now here in Montreal where Lewis Hamilton took his first win 12 months ago. Robert Kubica heads a BMW 1-2. Robert Kubica wins in Canada. He takes the lead in the Drivers' World Championship and a star is well and truly born. Thoroughly, thoroughly well-deserved victory there for Kubica. That's been, that's been coming, hasn't it? No doubt about it. He's been threatening to do that. Heidfeld takes a good second after a difficult weekend. As well, because that means that Hamilton and Massa will be tied on points, but, Ham but uh, Kubica will take the lead. Yeah, so... Robert. Bravo, bravissimo, bravissimo. That's an historical win, Robert. You are leading the championship now. Thank you, guys. Thank you. BMW, as they got their first win, which was what they wanted to do in 2008, they would abandoned the car development in 2008 to focus on the new 2009 aerodynamic regulations, which in hindsight, which was a grave error, considering that this was the first time they had a very good card that was capable of winning the title on their hands. Mike Crack, who is now the team principal of Aston Martin, who was Kubica's chief engineer at BMW Sauber, called him the most naturally gifted racing driver he has ever seen. Kubica would finish 15 points ahead of Hyde failed in that season and saves BMW for 2009. Now in the 2009 regulations BMW would test a curse system that wouldn't work out as they hoped and they fell off massively that season as Kubica and Heidfeld would finish 13th and 14th in the standings while uh, with uh, Kubica two points behind Heidfeld. He, he got his only podium of the season at Brazil and after 2009, BMW pulled out, out of the sport. Kubica didn't care about winning titles or races necessarily. His main focus was to become the rest, best racing driver he possibly could be with the tools he had, even when he joined Formula 1. Kubica would start rallying to gain more experience and skill as a racing driver due to that. In 2010, he would sign with the Renault Formula 1 team alongside Vitaly Petrov for the 2010 Formula 1 season. This season is considered by many to be his best season of his career as he would push his lower midfield Renault into three podium finishes which are at Monaco, Australia and Belgium. He finished 8th in the championship with 136 points compared to Petrov's 27 with the current point system which is 25, 18, 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1, if I remember that correctly. But this excluded the fastest lap point, which we have now. He had very memorable drives, including a front row quali lap in Monaco, which would put him second place in some spectacular wet weather drives. Now Mercedes Formula 1 team technical director James Allison, who was working at Renault in 2010, said if we give him a car that is even half capable of getting a championship, he'll get one. That says a lot about Robert coming from a man who was involved winning in winning titles with Ferrari from 2000-2004, Renault in 2005-2006, to and, and Mercedes from 2018-2021. Kibitza would stay at Renault, which was now Lotus for the 2021 season, despite speculation that Massa could have been replaced by the Polish man from Autosport. 
Now, what happened on February 8th, 2011, would forever change his career. Kubica was participating in the Rally di Andorra in Italy, which he was thinking of dropping out of, but he never called his manager to drop out and race anyway. He would suffer a horrific accident, which would happen after his Skoda Favia, the rear, hit the guard hit the back of a guardrail, spearing his car straight into a guardrail that wasn't fitted properly, and it went straight through his car, partially severing his forearm. He suffered significant blood loss as well as compound fractures in his elbow, shoulder, and leg. He went through multiple surgeries to recover, and he wouldn't be ready for the 2012 season, and later was announced in 2018 by Kubitz himself that he had to drive with Ferrari for the 2012 Formula 1 season. Kubitz's recovery was compounded in January of 2012 by slipping on ice in Poland and breaking his leg. He would return in the Rondi Gomito Delana rally and he would win by one minute. In 2013, he would continue his return by driving for Citroen in the European Rally and World Rally 2 Championship. He would go on to win the WRC 2 Championship after his, first, after his fifth win in Rally Rack Catalonia and he would later conduct tests with the Mercedes Formula 1 team in similar. They, uh, they said he was promising but due to the tight com confines of a Formula 1 car and his arm injury he wouldn't be able to race at tighter tracks like Monaco. As for Kubica's 2014 WRC campaign, he was very quick but didn't have the results to show for it as he would either crash or have technical issues before the end of a rally. He would also race in WRC in 2015 and would take part in the Mugello 12 hours in 2016. In 2017, he would race in the 24 hours of Dubai, which would end with mechanical issues. Kubica would later race in 2017, earning tests with Renault, with Team Boss Serial Abitable, saying that he was still quick and consistent and the most important of all was still enthusiastic at all times with the team. On July 24th, he would complete 142 laps at the Hungaro ring, one and a half seconds behind Sebastian Vettel. Kubica tested a few times with Williams later that year and would go on to sign as a reserve driver for Williams in 2018. He had a, f a free practice one session at the 2018 Spanish Grand Prix where he outperformed Stroll. Kubica would complete his return, signing with Williams in 2019 to replace Felipe Massa who for the second time in his career announced his retirement alongside George Russell who was the 2018 GP2 or Formula 2 champion. Well, uh, he would score one point in a disappointing campaign with the Williams being the slowest car, and he would leave to become Alfa Romeo's reserve driver for 2020. In 2021, he would replace Kimi Raikkonen at the Italian and Dutch Grand Prix as Kimi had got COVID. Chibitza in 2021 would also win the European Le Mans series with Team WRT and in this year in 2022 would famously lose the 24 hours of Le Mans in the LMP2 category as on the final lap of the 24 hour race the car would just turn off and leave them to finish second place in the race. Very disappointing for the Premo Orlean team. Uh, there's been big names like Alonso called him the best driver as he was the best driver in karting. He beat everyone in karting who is now winning nowadays. People like Lewis Hamilton and Rosberg before he retired. Lewis Hamilton himself also said Kubica was one of the quickest drivers he ever raced again and he just had raw natural talent. Well, guys, that was the story of Robert Kubica 
now you know just how good this guy actually was. If you enjoyed, make sure to like the video and subscribe. And if you didn't enjoy it, tell me why in the comments. And this is Lewis. I'll see you guys later. Bye.